This is Movies, a podcast about the act of cinema. With me today is Hans, who uh, finally decided to upgrade his camera and is suffering yeah, it's, tremendous it, difficulties. It, it's very unflattering. You can really see my adult acne now. I'm going to have to start wearing makeup to not look so fucking terrible and red. And yeah, I'm very self-conscious. Now. Yeah, but you got a backwards hat on like a cool guy. What is that, it's the because Charlotte I, Hornets? Yeah, it's because uh, you can really see my receding hairline with this light so it was just like a quick fix so that uh the the nice people on the internet don't make fun of me too much no what you need to do is zoom has the uh touch-up filter and you can add that and you can look beautiful uh you can be like an anime girl i'm gonna do that real quick there we go what i think you can anyway hey we got dalton on the show from the loud boys hey dude i'm doing well man how are you Doing very well. Doing very. That's a perfect hat, Hans. Uh, uh, you, you. Uh, this is your first appearance on the show. We've had your buddy, your co-host, Robbie Goodwin, on a number of times. Um, how, how did, how do you know Robbie? You and Robbie seem extremely different. Two different people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, it's the Island of Misfit Toys, man. Um, he was a. Uh, I'm trying to remember how we met. I know that when I moved out here, the the chick I was living with, a friend of mine, she had known him from L.A. And I think she introduced us. And I just remember we would be just kind of the, the losers at the high school dance, but at the creek in the cave. Oh, yeah. Like, we would just be the guys like, yeah. <laughs> and so we just started hanging out. And then... Um, he had me on his other podcast. Uh, but yeah, we are very, very different people. <laughs> uh, more importantly, I'm very curious how, how uh, Joe got roped into that. Because you look, you take a look at you two and you're like, all right, well, these are two young men. Then you take a look at Joe and it's like, yeah, he's a young man. But he's not a young man, is he? No, he's a geriatric. <laughs> yeah. He's on death's door. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in his he's probably closer to Hans's age here. Hans, he's I mean, he's like right. he's like 48, 49. Yeah. So did he just like groom you guys or what? No, um Robbie knew him from San Francisco. They I guess cuz they're both from like the Bay Area. So they did comedy out there together and they grew they Robbie both just and then- and then just brought him along. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. And then um, I remember, yeah, uh, Joe, I think it was just Ro- Robbie was doing his other podcast. And one night he just, he had me and Joe on, like two friends of his. And it was like a, a, a decent vibe. So we just kept just doing that. <laughs> but I, when we started the show, I did not know those guys really. Well, that, yeah, that you can makes... tell. You can you can tell in the early episodes where it's kind of like still feeling each other. Uh, yeah, well, like not, we not entirely comfortable. Yeah. Like we had all like they knew each other, but I had just met both of them. Right. So That's... what was this other podcast? Was he was doing like his Marin thing of just like one on one interview thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, yeah, it was called "Will Somebody Fuck Me" with Robbie Goodwin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so what's going on with you and Gas Digital? I know you announced that you're partnering with Gas Digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're we're still working everything out how this is going to go down. But yeah, we're working alongside Lewis and Gas Digital. Um, so our show's not really changing. We still have full control over it. You know, we're gonna do our free episode and our Patreon episode and have the patreon available for the subscribers still but um yeah we're just we're going to be recording there for the time being unless we find a better space we want to record it but i like this studio and um and we're just gonna be doing a lot of uh cross promotion with gas digital is it just gonna be lewis as a guest every week pretty much (laughs) yeah it's um, you can just he can just walk in on every it's, show, I think. Yeah. It's going to be Louis J. Gomez presents the Loud Boys <laughs> featuring Louis J. Gomez. Yeah, that's what the merch is going to say. It's just his, yeah. just his name in big and little loud. Um, no, it's a, it's a great opportunity. I'm, I'm excited to work with Louis and 
grow together as business partners that's very cute that's a cute way to put it i like that (laughs) yeah he is not my boss we are business partners Uh, are you an Eli Roth fan? You picked a movie tonight, a movie that I watched actually, I think, um, maybe last year because it was part of the, uh, I, the Joe Bob Briggs Last Drive-In program. But I, I remember seeing this movie first in theaters in 2013. We're going to be talking about Eli Roth's uh, The Green Inferno, by the way. I thought this was an interesting choice. Um, wh- what, was the, uh, what was the motivation be- behind picking this movie for the well, show? Well, I, I do love horror movies. And I originally pit when when Hans reached out to me. I originally pitched Martyrs, and I had seen that, but that's a very very uh, bleak. I mean, this movie was also pretty bleak, but I just didn't want to watch that one again. So I was like, well, what's a what's a horror movie I haven't seen yet? And I remember Green Inferno, and I do remember as a kid when Eli Roth hit the scene when Hostel came out. Hmm. He was like this. Big, and I was a child, but I remember he was like this big, scary figure in in movies at the time. Like there was like all this talk about uh, gore because gore was big then, and he I I don't know I that was such a weird time for movies because we did really fall in love with gore, and if you go back and watch Hostel one and two, they're not good. Yeah, they're not good movies, but I remember them being kind of praised at the time for being like somehow cutting edge or whatever and then uh so i wanted to i haven't seen i I had not seen this movie and so i wanted to see what it's like for this guy now and uh it ain't looking too good (laughs) no no this isn't even now this is like eight years ago yeah i know this was years ago (laughs) Um, yeah, I, I remember Hostel was like one of those movies that was talked about where you just, it was shocking. You had to see it. I think I got like a bootleg DVD of it from a friend of mine and checked it out. I was like, all right, this is all right. This is okay. I enjoyed it at the time. Uh, like the snobby person's pick would be like, oh, well, you know, Hostel 2 is better than Hostel 1. Hostel 2 is the superior. Well, that's because more one. women get abused. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, not, I'm not particularly a fan of Hostel 2. That's probably where I fell off with Eli Roth, but I really enjoyed Cabin Fever in that first Hostel movie. Yeah, man. I will say, um, like, none of these movies are cinema. They're not, like, high art, but Cabin Fever and Hostel 1 are both fun, you know? And then, the yeah, I feel like... the. It, Green Inferno, especially, I never felt like I was having fun. Oh, I had so much fun with it. <laughs> I had so much fun just. I, mean, I don't know. You I, know I, what? I, I gotta think about it because there were mo. It was most. There was a lot of boring parts. Yeah, yeah. And then there was parts that were disturbing. And now that I think about it, it does turn into kind of an Indiana Jones movie near the end, and that was fun. So we'll get we'll get into it. <laughs> I think my biggest problem with this movie is all the Latin actors. I think they, they were not that they were Latin, but just they're bad actors. You see, when you want to yeah. do a movie in where, wherever they shot this, then you're going to pull the local, I guess, cast, uh, you know, uh, actors that you can for the cast. And they're so stale. They don't know how to give a delivery at all, especially the, well, the antagonist I, of the movie. I terrible. think what he was going for was the feeling of um, those original uh exploitation people go to the jungle movies like cannibal holocaust yeah because that i think that movie casted just like just random like i don't know whoever they knew or whatever an open letter that they found these people and so it made it look very real and uh at the time people thought it was real i think he was trying to recreate that feeling because if you notice in the credits he listed everybody's Twitter handles. I which, did see that. I most people don't do that. Ago. That was very peculiar. It's not something yeah, that and I, stuck with, with movies since. I think that's because none of these people were actors. Yeah. The, the only one that I recognized from the cast was the, the, the kid from Spy Kids. The Daryl yeah. Sabra, uh, all grown up from Sam World's Sam Greatest Bar. Dad. Have you ever seen that movie? Um, I have not seen it, but I know. Yeah, I know what it is. That, that's World's always a good way to put it. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I know what it is. That yeah, is like, I remember it came on, like, a Stars channel one day, and I caught pieces of it, and I was like, I've been, I'll check this out one day. I just never got around to watching all of it. 
Mm-hmm. He's the kid that uh, asphyxiated masturbating, right? That's the story. Yeah. yeah. It's right. well, it's kind of a biopic now. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Eli Roth, the same year as this, wound up putting out another film called Knock Knock, which features, I believe, no, was, the same actress. That's uh, 2015. Was that the one with Keanu? 2015. Yeah. yeah, it was with Keanu. Uh, this was 2013. I could have sworn this was the same year as Knock Knock, and one of them got a delayed release. I, as a matter of fact, I think Green Inferno was shot and finished in 2013, and it might have been released in 2015. I could be wrong about that. Uh, one of the films was sounds, delayed. I remember there was some kind of news around this movie that it had been made, and he was trying to figure out how to... I don't know. I, I, I don't remember. Yeah. This kind of yeah. came and went. They kind of made it for like a minute seem like it was going to be like this revelation, like this big controversy. But yeah, it just it's just kind of not a good movie. Yeah, yeah sure. you're right. Uh, it, it was released wide, I guess that's how you say it, on 2015, but it was made in 2013. So, so do you, it was, does it, it say like, what held up the movie? It's not, a, I mean, look, as far as films go, it's not that controversial compared to his earlier films. I don't know what the no. problem could have been. Uh, I know that there was some well, Twitter controversy at the time because he was taking a stab at SJWs in a way uh, before really anybody else in, in media. I mean, one of the most ham-fisted ways I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just fucking clobbers you with his old man shaking his fist at kids. Uh, dude, That I mean, this this was brutal. That... More than the more than the people getting eaten alive, the way that those college girls were acting, mm-hmm. that was that hurt to watch. Well, that was what was satisfying for me, just seeing them die. Was, they were so insufferable he, that I just he really them sets all up. Very... He sets up such unlikable characters that you really do just you're like, I don't care what happens to these yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, the controversy I was reading about it earlier was that uh, there were some activist groups saying that the portrayal of uh, wild natives as wild natives uh, would cause violence against them or some shit like that. Uh, but he came out saying that uh, the people that uh, you should be upset uh, t- about were the people that were destroying those places, not someone that made a movie. Like, nothing is going to come out of this. Uh, so <laughs> I, I guess... Yeah, it's so funny because it's it's not like you would see one on the street. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not unless unless there's like um what was that Tim Allen Jungle to Jungle. There was like a right. situation like that, that would where be a great double feature with this movie. Is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tim Allen goes to get his son and they eat him. <laughs> <laughs> they cut his dick and balls off. <laughs> I just wanted to meet my son. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen like island theaters, but all I seen, I mean, when I was uh, younger, I saw this clip of an island theater, I think it's in Fiji somewhere. And uh, all they would do is they would just gather around and they would just watch uh, the Three Stooges at the theater every weekend. And that's the type of movies they got in Fiji, is Three Stooges cart. They act like it just happened. That yeah. actually is awesome. I might move to Fiji. <laughs> You get Steamboat Willie and the Three Stooges. <laughs> I, dude, I would love to go to a theater and watch Three Stooges. I t- I'm on an I'm on an edible right now. Just thinking about that is making me happy. <laughs> well, that was also so funny because it was what like 15 minutes. So you just go in the theater for 15 minutes and then. Well, you- I, I think the three they the would give you a news Stooges- at the front, right? They would show you World War Two bombers uh you know killing japanese people with the, with the you know the plane and then they would cut to the three and that would be a happy time the, the three stooges would play i think before a movie so it would be like oh okay because i uh back in the day like we have the term trailer uh back in the day trailers played after the movie because they tra- trail 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 so they before movies they would play a uh, wartime propaganda and like Three Stooges and Disney shit. So you would get like actually like if you go to like a, a, a an artsy fartsy theater now they don't play uh, trailers before the movie they play like short films and stuff. So you get Three Stooges before Going with the Wind and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Huh? Dalton, have Man. you ever put uh, speaking of wartime propaganda? Have you ever put Jet Li's name into Google? 
No. No, you should put Jet Li's name into Google and take a look at the first photo of him on Google. It's pretty unflattering. It's pretty Let me 1920s see. caricature. Jet Li. Do I have to turn the safe search off? I, I don't, maybe. Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah, that's Mickey Rooney. Yeah, yes, dude. It looks like dude, Mickey Rooney yeah. at breakfast at Tiffany's. Exactly dude. like him. Yeah, that's wild. That's awesome. <laughs> that looks that, yeah, that looks like I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, I don't know how to do this yet, but I'm gonna see if I can make that the album art for this episode. Um just a gently space. Yes, just just that image at six hundred. What is he doing in this dude? He has to know what he looks like. That's, that's so funny. Is it, is it that? Is it, is it you want to hold it up? That? Just no, it's not that one. No, 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 no. Oh. That's not a nice one either. It's the main one. How do you miss it? Um, so I mean, mine's Costa Rica and Google. Oh, that's right. Well, don't <laughs> go to Google.cr. Go to Google.com like a normal person. Um, <laughs> but Green yeah, Inferno, great. Green Inferno, is, Green uh, Inferno, the Green Inferno. Where would you? I mean, how many of his films have you seen? Is this the most recent film of his you've seen, Dalton? Yeah, I, I was. I don't know how much I was. I'm trying to remember if I was ever even a fan real because I remember watching Cabin Fever as a kid and I liked I enjoyed that I like I remember a scene where a guy gets a harmonica lodge in his throat that was fun there was the bunny I like that uh Hostel's fun Hostel 2 is pretty dark um yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, this is the most recent film of his I've seen. I'm I'm kind of interested in him as like a guy, as like a like an edge lord filmmaker who like thinks himself in the same realm as Tarantino and is obviously not. Yeah. No, he's yeah. just kind of like a modern Kevin Smith in that way, where he's brushing shoulders with or like he's caught the attention of a guy who's much better than him or much cooler than him, but he thinks he's in that tier. Yeah, it's 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 like I I found this movie to not to be so lacking in any subtlety that it was just obnoxious. It was just like it, this is it just felt very like very childish. Well, the the diarrhea scene really caught me by surprise and made me oh dude, maybe, that made maybe me laugh. Poor knee, dude. <laughs> dude, that, when that chick had diarrhea. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. I, I, I mean, I get the point. The point of the movie is it is supposed to be gratuitous. It's yeah. supposed to be like a um, that it, it's not. It's not supposed to be like high art. It's supposed to be exploitation and splatter and blood and guts. But even then, I, I was still like pretty bored a lot of the time. What? I was like, there's a lot of nothing happening in this movie. You didn't like the the scene where they got the natives high? That was very clear. I mean, that, that's what I'm talking about. That's dude, Kevin Smith would write that. By the way, the scene before that bothered me because that that so man, we're jumping all over the. Okay, so hold on, it's we need to, so what uh, what this movie is is it, it's a a critique on uh, white women. It's a it, truly it's Eli Roth doing like a Bill Burr bit, but <laughs> but in a movie about cannibals, because it's it's all about like these two. We start off with these two college girls in like this uh this class where the this teacher is like female genital mutilation. Other from moving forward, just going to refer to it as FGM because. Uh, too many syllables <laughs> like, wait, like they say they say fgm so many times in this movie like he's trying to brand it like he's trying to be like like that's good like he's gonna make shirts that say fgm it's gonna stick yeah my yeah, yeah, yeah. female general manipulation t-shirt yeah. yeah so these girls so this chick hears about clitorectomies in the in the wild in the jungles and she gets all pissed off and she's like huffing and puffing and like, how could they, how could we let this happen? And the teacher's just like, shit, man, I don't know. What are you going to do about it, bitch? And it's so like my daddy, my daddy works for the, what is it? UN? Or, yeah. Your or dad's a lawyer for the UN. So it's like, we're, we're obviously, in, oh, and so we're obviously setting up for this, this chick right away to be an insufferable, um, just, 
uh, like academic twat who thinks yeah. she's going to save the world by encroach. I, I don't even know. I don't know. That's the other thing. I don't know who the good guy in this movie is. Like, I don't know who I'm supposed to be rooting for because she fucking sucks. Yeah. And then and then they're in the jungle with all the cannibals. And it's like, well, you they shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Like, you shouldn't be doing this. I'm kind of on the cannibal side here. I, I don't know, man. It was so that's just like, a smart movie because everybody's wrong. It makes you think. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? I guess so, I man. I guess I, I really need to sit with this one. This one's got me thinking. <laughs> Green no, Inferno's message. really got you really got the gears turning, boys. <laughs> the message is that even though they might uh, kill your friends brutally and want to, I, I I don't know what what I don't even know what they were trying to do with her virginity uh, because no, I thought I was, gonna say that was that. Her. So wait, wait, was that made clear that she's a virgin? And yeah. so they're yeah. they're gonna try and like force her into the tribe. So yeah, the plane crashes, now they're all being held captive by cannibals. And I, they can only do this clitorectomy on virgins. If you're a whore, they're just gonna go ahead and kill you and eat you. <laughs> yeah. And so uh so that so they they've picked her because she's a virgin. Like they do the thing with the they do the Aziz claw. <laughs> you know, and the, the 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 tribe woman the leader pulls it out and it's covered in blood and so that's how and i guess that's how they know she's a virgin oh yes i guess this is dude it's like she like this what it's not scary for me to watch a woman with a big bone claw <laughs> shove it in, inside a woman's pussy and bust her hymen Cause that's what happened in that. Scene. I'm just now realizing what happened in that scene. Yeah, she finger fucked her with the bone claw and busted her hymen, and now they picked her to have a clitorectomy. Yeah, because it, she tried. She tried with the other two, and the other two were sluts, so they were just like, "Ow!" She, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like, "Oh, ouch!" Yeah. Yeah, she put the bone claw in there and said, "Damn, I could probably fit like three more bone claws in the pussy." <laughs> <laughs> and so, it's not. That's not even scary to me. Um, it's, it just comes across as like when you're thir- when you're 13 and smoke K2 in your friend's garage and it, you know, like when you're like getting high for the first time shit where you're like what you think is going to be cool and fun, but that just came across as like, I don't know, man. Do you, do you think, do you think it would have been spookier if they were giving out like prostate exams with that instead? Or yes, <laughs> that would be scary because now we're talking about my butt. <laughs> now I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to know some jungle bitch coming in my ass with the bone claw, <laughs> popping hemorrhoids with a bone claw. You know I mean, that fat guy had hemorrhoids for sure. Had hemorrhoids. <laughs> Dude, that would be a fun <laughs> scene. Is they cut their hemorrhoids out and eat them. <laughs> I mean, I it's I think I'm maybe looking at this movie from too uh, harsh of a because I think overall, if you can watch this, this is a fun. I did take an edible and watch it, and it's a it's a fun getting high movie, right? You know, and, and I'm, I'm I think I might be overthinking it because what we got in this, we've got we've got white women, which hey fellas, we all hate them. Yep. And what's, <laughs> what's this movie about? White women sticking their nose where it don't belong and get mm-hmm. fuck around, find out. That's what this movie uh, This is the movie. This is the fuck around, find out movie. Be, being fooled by a kind of brown guy that has a retarded accent and that's all they need to go to the jungle to convince all of them that he's yeah. hot, hot, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So after, after Justine, the protagonist, discovers uh, clitorectomies and female fgm after she learns about fgm in her uh whatever class that was <laughs> uh she goes she finds like a some guy wants to fuck her and gives her a flyer he's like come with me i'm i work with these activists and so she goes and right away so the leader of this group is this guy alejandro right away i mean this dude's bad news you know, like this guy is clearly uh i mean i i guess that's what's great about this i I, I, no 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 he's clearly a psycho and kind of a cult leader 
And um, I guess this is what's great about this movie is everybody is so surface level mm-hmm. that you can just watch them get skinned alive and eaten and burned. And so, yeah. yeah they, they, don't give them, they don't give them any depth so that you don't care for them at all. And instead, they, they're just so obnoxious that when you see them getting cut to pieces, you're kind of like, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, it's, they deserve it. But who's the most intolerable character? Because I think he, he probably would be in contention for that. We don't see him. As a matter of fact, they added a button at the end because they were so confident this was going to be fire and it was going to get a sequel uh, that never happened, that Dude, he's alive. I got to be honest, though. The movie this sets up is more interesting to me. Because... With, yeah. Well, because they go through all this, you know... Uh, the the play, So their plane crashes over the jungle... And people die in the crash. Whoever's left gets abducted by the cannibals. And the entire time they're abducted, uh, this one chick has diarrhea. I get horny. And then um, the the leader of the group, Alejandro, is revealing himself to be like the Patrick Bateman of of this movie. Just a cold, calculating uh, sociopath. And uh, the entire time he's like fucking everybody over and only looking out for himself and so when he uh, masturbates at some he, point at looking point, at everyone yeah, <laughs> just uh, so after staring so there's a scene yeah so they're all in the cages and there's a scene with a blonde one um they're all handed like bowls with pork scraps in them and they eat their pork you can't how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat right and mm-hmm. and they <laughs> So and she looks in the bowl and notices the tattoo that was on her like girlfriend or whatever, and I, I, I will say I found this scene disturbing. This actually bothered me, uh, because th- this, I, I don't know why this one got to me. Well, the little boys playing with the pieces of skin. <laughs> so no, 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 not that. You're talking about the throat cutting. Yeah, when she she uh, realizes that she's eaten out of a a bowl that has her friend's skin in it. And so she's like, yeah. And so she smashes the bowl and slices her own throat. Open. It should be prefaced. She is a vegan and she makes note to not yeah. eat any of the, the meat that is offered at any point. Yeah. And so, Oh yeah. yeah. And, yes. and they were less, they were lesbians too. She was her girlfriend. Yeah. Cause they, they kiss when she es- escapes. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. He, Eli Roth really, hammers home the point that this woman is vegan yes she did it is her entire personality he's doing the very the 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 hack comic like the joe rogan like what's up what's up with vegans guys (laughs) with this character with joe rogan now of course dude i got beef (laughs) with joe rogan uh after after my humiliating defeat at the hands of tony hinchcliffe i said you know what (laughs) I'm just going to go straight to the boss's castle, like in Chrono Trigger. You know in Chrono Trigger when you can go, just go right to 1999 and get killed by Lavos? Joe Rogan is Lavos, and I'm going straight to 1999. Does this make sense, guys? You played yeah. Chrono Trigger? Yeah, no. no. Okay, I, cool. I, I, I haven't, but I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um... So yeah, so she's all the whole movie. She's making it a point that she's vegan, and I think was the scene implying that they weren't actually pork scraps. It was like the pieces of the the woman. Uh, oh. I'm not certain. Uh, was it was it that they made? I don't know. I'm not gonna take it. I I don't know. I, I I think what he was getting at is that not only was the bowl made out of skin, what they had fed them was that woman, and so the yeah I I something about. I will say something about suicide is disturbing in, in a way that when people get killed doesn't bother me as much. You know what I mean? Like watching a woman watching a woman slice her throat open does kind of give yeah, me the willies. The old so, spade move. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> um, that, that, that really does make sense, though, because you don't really see any pigs in the movie at all. So the fact that they're eating pig when all no, there's seen pigs. The there's a boar. I think I'm yeah. fairly certain there's a boar. It's oh, there is. Oh, oh. Hmm. um. Right. But yeah. So, man, this this was just 
now, now I think, okay, here's how you gotta think about this. This is a theme park ride. This is just a gory uh, amusement park ride. Because I'm thinking back on it, there were a lot of fun kills. That first guy to get killed, Remember when the, the lady goes, she has the, the the pussy bone claw, but before she uses it on pussy, she digs that dude's eyes out and eats them, yeah, cuts yeah, his tongue yeah. off, and she's like cutting all of his limbs off. And what I, what I do like about this movie, this made me laugh, is all the scenes where they cut people's limbs off and they like throw them out in the crowd. They always have a shot of like a little kid grabbing like a leg and <laughs> yeah. running off with it. <laughs> Damn, dude, I'm coming. I'm coming around on this dude. Eli Roth fucking rules, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't have a problem with this movie. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a swan song to the earlier part of his career where he was so uh, body horror centric. Uh, because right after this, he does get into Knock Knock, and then you, you know, you just kind of see generic thrillers from him. I know he does a Death Wish. That remake, Death which Wish is movie. not very good. Uh, Doll, have you seen God the Death damn. Wish remake? No, uh, I somebody was just telling me about it. It looked really bad. It's, it's just Bruce Willis it's is Bruce a male Willis. nurse, and then he goes on the Breakfast Club or something. I don't know. It's a piece of shit. I watched it on a Greyhound bus one time, coming back from New York City, and uh, that was what was appropriate for that movie. I didn't lose anything at all not seeing that in the theater. Uh, and then he did a, a, a children's film recently, I think with Jack Black, called, I think it was The, the House with the Clock in Its Walls. Yep. That actually looks good. I have We're big this. fans of the, of Jack Black on the Loud Boys. So Goosebumps? You, you, you watch Goosebumps? I actually kind of like that movie. I haven't <laughs> seen it. I I didn't check it out. I watched it. It's it's a romp, dude. It's it's a fun little meta movie where it's like he plays R.L. Stein and all of his books come to life. And then at the end of the movie uh rl he meets rl stein at, at the school and uh they're, they're like who's that and he goes that's jack he's the music teacher oh, so our, so he played rl stein oh, no. and rl stein played Stan jack Lee black style cameo. Wow. <laughs> what a fun little movie uh <laughs> nothing like the green the- inferno no uh, i was gonna say did you check out fear street at all that was the other famous rl i hated it i watched yeah. the first i watched the first one and i was just i just didn't it didn't connect with me at all i really disliked the uh the reliance on pop music to try and make up for uh, the complete lack of night. That, yeah, that's so distracting to me when a movie is set in, in a certain time and they just keep beating you over the head with the the whatever the top forty was then. That's, that's a, I, I, uh, the, uh, the uh, House of Gucci trailer. Have you guys seen that where they just play hard and blast like every other period piece no. in the seventies film? Please, I'm getting tired of period pieces, dude. I'm getting tired of shit being set in another decade. What about something like The Favorite? Was was that? I don't know. You ever see Barry Lyndon? Oh yeah, that's good. That's that's. that's no, that's, I mean, there seems to be like a lot of things being made now. That's like, it, yeah, I mean, just nostalgia and all that. It's it's yeah, just getting. It's remember this. Remember how this was a thing once. So you remember yeah. when you were a kid? Do you? might like this because they know uh, my big... people will show up if they go oh oh i feel familiar i feel some sense of nostalgia for that like that that takes the place of quality and um most of the the cases of these like recent yeah well I, and so i will say to this movie's credit now i'm, I'm turning into a real cinephile because now i'm thinking now i'm really thinking about this i will say to this movie's credit and to eli roth eli okay because you guys did Ro- Robbie talked about Zack Snyder with you guys, right? Always. Every time yeah. we've had him on, yeah. You guys, yeah. You, guys, <laughs> you guys are fans of Zack Snyder? Hans loves Zack Snyder. Me, I'm fair weather. The more I'm thinking about this, I think why I picked this movie is deep down, I believe, Eli Roth to be the Zack Snyder of horror. Even though Zack Snyder has made horror movies. Mm-hmm. I think you Eli... Know, you, you, you know what? As a Zack Snyder fanatic, uh, I agree with that statement. <laughs> because you know what? This this movie, for all of its flaws, was made in earnest. You know, it was um, clearly Eli Roth at, at a young age watched Cannibal Holocaust and all of those old school cannibal movies, and he loved them, and he was inspired by those films. 
and he wanted to make his own uh cannibal movie like that and i do think there is a sincerity to this movie that you don't find in a lot of movies and that's you're completely right a lot of these types of films will rely on uh tongue-in-cheek comedy that comes at the expense of the film that the people are watching like haha isn't this a piece of shit it's kind of a cop-out whereas he commits to it all the way through and does treat it like a sincere uh movie as ridiculous as moments in it may be so i do think it has that enduring quality to it uh certainly more so than um I don't know, Hans, give me an example of a, like a recent horror movie where they do exactly what I just said they did, where they just kind of uh, use the, you know, the, the theme of the movie at its own expense uh, to make the audience more comfortable. Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, fucking recent horror movies? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. Ar- Army of the Dead. Right? That's not a horror movie. I mean, it's just That's, an action movie. Yeah. This is a bad movie, yeah. Uh, I, yeah what I'm about really something like... It. Something like Happy Death Day, that was very successful, right? Yeah, I think Blumhouse really uh, does dig into that probably more than anybody else. A24, if you check out any of their horror movies, it's almost serious to a fault at times. Yeah, Yeah, it's just slow, atmospheric, and sometimes just bland and not very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mean, that's that's the thing. You know, it's like you got movies like Hereditary and Midsommar. And all these like artsy movies, and I, I love those movies. And the people making those movies were, I think, they were just inspired by different things. And I, I think Eli Roth was inspired by those same things. But what he was attracted to more was sort of the aggressive, gory, uh, like heightened reality type of uh, horror movies. And that's what he, you know, and that's what he wants to make. Um, where uh, uh, and you know it has its place. Um, I don't. It's it's gonna. I don't know if he's ever gonna make another decent movie. But no, he's uh, kind of hopped into the career trajectory of a lot of those. I don't. I mean, I don't know how well versed on like '80s horror directors you are, Dalton. But a lot of these guys, like a John Carpenter or uh, a John Landis, at a certain point they kind of hopped out of horror, did more commercial friendly movies. And then wound up sterilizing their their own style. Like maybe they got bored of doing what they were doing, tried to do something for a little bit of money, then try to get back into it, and it's not really the same thing anymore. So I don't know. Uh, you don't really see too many other horror directors that are on that path that Eli Roth, I guess, is on right now. I don't know what he's up to. I know I he was supposed to do that Jason Statham movie. The what was it called? The Meg, that shark movie. Yeah. Um, and then you you check into that that film whoever wound up helming it it's just like chinese well let me let me say something now that this edible is really hitting me i fucking love the green inferno dude (laughs) i fucking dude i really come around and you know what i love cabin fever i love hostile hostile 2 uh (laughs) that's it you can't really go further than that with this yeah i mean i mean i don't know i'm bad i'm thinking about it and it is like there is something about just hyper gratuitous violence they i mean alejandro says it in the movie violence is also good for stress relief or whatever when he's beaten off dude that actually you know what you know i'm thinking about this this movie fucking rules dude because he's beating off and they're like how could you be jerking off when they're like cutting every girl's clits off and eating us and he's like i need to focus and then he, and he, he goes that guy into choking him and he's a he wants to, he's about to come when the villagers come up and they're like oh and he's yeah, like ah oh. He gets more into it as he's being choked. Too. Yeah, dude. His face is more intense. It's so funny. It's so funny, dude. And before that, we see a woman have diarrhea. <laughs> this movie really rocks, man. Native children laughing at her because she stinks. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is like this is just like a almost like a tasteless apocalypto. This is like <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when a Jew tries to make apocalypto? <laughs> I forget because this so we were talking about this Alejandro guy is just a total sociopath, and so uh, he's been he's been a dick the whole movie, and so they got they they've captured Justine again, and they they brought her. This is where I got frustrated because this movie shows us all the gory kills, guy people getting skinned alive, chopped up, all this, 
in the entire movie, they've been telling us FGM, FGM. And so they, they tie her up and they're going to perform a clitorectomy on her. And it, he fucking blue balls us with the clitorectomy. They got her tied up, and there's a there's a little kid who the entire movie she's got had this little flute. She's been like being like his Peter Pan. She's like, yeah. she befriends one of the villagers. She's like, <laughs> and so he saves her just in the nick of time. Right as they're about to cut her pussy off, he comes in and unties her. And I'm like, but then- why, why did you take us this far not to show us the clitorectomy? <laughs> It also doesn't make sense because in that culture, that's normal. So why would the kids stop something that for them is normal? Yeah, it's like all she somehow broke a language barrier with her little keychain flute and made this kid like love her. She like trained this <laughs> to keep her her pussy alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we don't get to see the clitorectomy, <laughs> and then she escapes and she doesn't. Uh, Alejandro's like, wait, wait, he saved me! And she's like, ah, fuck you, Alejandro. And then her other buddy that was alive, they do the ant thing with him that Steve-O did in Wild Boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they, like, tie him up, they tie him up, and they're beating the fuck out of him, and they cover him in, like, green sauce, verde sauce or whatever. <laughs> and they let the ants loose, and man, this was actually a cool scene. I kinda, I like it when characters do this. Uh, I like this better than suicide because she comes up on her friend who's been stung by bitten by all these ants and uh, she's like going to untie him and he just goes, kill me, kill me. And she's like, I don't want to kill you. I like this better than suicide because it's um, more. I don't know. There's more of like a human connection. It's not somebody just doing it. And then you're like, what the fuck? It's like, okay, I have your permission. Uh, you know, I will guide you into the next world, my yeah. friend. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. your recreation of the movie more than I'm probably the movie itself, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched it right before this, so it's like fresh on my mind. But she won't kill him. And so her little, like, this is what the movie at this point has become like an Indiana Jones movie. Like even the music turns into like, boom, boom, ba, dum, ba, dum, boom, ba, dum. like running around the jungle. That sounds more Beverly Hills cop. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the music, really, the music came, the music became bum, 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 yeah, the little so boy. so now it's an Indiana Jones movie, and the little uh the little villager boy she's befriended has become the short round of this movie. But instead of being like a cute little Asian boy who, you know, no time for love, Doctor Jones, he, he, the little boy is the one who kills her friend. He like slices his throat for her, and and the boy says to her with his eyes like, "Okay, I, you can go now. <laughs> I, I took care of it for you." <laughs> It's crazy, dude. Because then this is where it becomes like apocalypto. Because as she's escaping, the villagers are chasing her down, and she runs to like a riverbed, and there's like a blue tiger or something. It, a tight ti- I've never seen a tiger this color. It really got yeah. me, man. It's striking. It's very dark, yeah. Yeah, and she's facing down the tiger, and it, it's set up as if it's almost like a like a trial for the villagers. Now, instead of a clitorectomy, she's she has the chance to prove herself by braving the tiger. And that is what happens. That's exactly what happens is she she faces down the like she swims across and she's not afraid of the tiger. And then there's all these like Mexicans that have shown up that are shooting all the villagers and gunning them down. And so she holds up her phone and it, it, her last act in the movie is she's she's like <laughs> I've got you on camera. Filmo. She she says Filmo because they're all Spanish. (laughs) And so she's filming it. So she's still going to be the savior of this tribe. She passed the tiger trial. She passed the the trial of the tiger. Uh, It's the eye of the fight. (laughs) (laughs) She's queen now. Yeah. And so now, now she's protecting the tribe in this moment. And so she just witnessed these people like 
massacre. They weren't, I mean, they weren't even really her friends. I think she had just met all of these people. Mm -hmm. So I guess she didn't really have a connection to anybody. It kind of sounds Yeah, like honestly, honestly. Arc. Yeah, why not be friends with the tribe? You didn't know these other fucking people. Yeah. It's like yeah. you just met all... Yeah, everyone involved you had just met. You watched them all get killed and eaten alive. And it's like, I don't know. We weren't supposed to be here anyway. I might as well... I'm on the tribe... Yeah, I'm kind of on the tribe side here. It kind of she sounds like Ari Aster needs to deliver some credit to Eli Roth with this movie. Because that's the same ending as Midsummer. They just make her the May Queen at the end. She embraces the murder of all her friends, and then she's kind of into it. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Pretty much. Yeah, because that's that's kind of what happens at the end of this. It's because she's at like a deposition, or or uh, she's testifying to her dad and other people, and she's lying to them, saying, "I never encountered any aggression from them, uh, no hate or anger or violence." And this one guy's like, I say, I say, I, he had some weird accent. He's like, they now they say the, to play yeah, he's character. like, now, now they, they, they say these jungle Mexicans are cannibals. Oh, uh, now, now, did you experience anything of the sort while you's down there? And she goes, no, uh, they were very friendly to me and they guided me uh, out of the jungle. So she, she defend like she sticks up for them and this effectively uh, stops their, uh rainforest from getting bulldozed and then the movie ends she does she lies at this testimony and then does like a sinister look at the camera and um it's like Alejandro. Alejandro. I, you know it's the fake out with Alejandro. well yeah so well i'm, I'm thinking because at first i hated that in like that scene because i was like how could you watch all of your friends get eat like, like i don't know but then i'm like yeah, you really shouldn't have even been there. You know, this is white women stick it. You fucked around, you found out. I'm telling you, this was fuck around, find out the movie. Was. <laughs> but it also makes sense that she doesn't care because uh, as soon as they get there and they realize that it's not how they thought it was going to be and, and they're like, well, we should get guns or whatever. And, and Alejandro says no. She's annoyed for the whole entire time they're, they're alive until they get caught. You can see in her face it's just like I really shouldn't be here. Like she's really annoyed with the fact that she's there, and also with the with the biracial fat guy that keeps trying to hit on her very awkwardly. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that makes sense that she would stand up for the. I don't know. The they didn't cut my clit. Well, didn't thing. well she did. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what happened was the 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 tiger trial. That was when she connected with the tribe because remember the tribe leader, the the guy in black black body yellow face i mean yeah. tiger woods uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and he's got the, he's got like the dinosaur bone through his nose he's like he's been shot by these the the spanish people and i think if i remember right he actually says we need you i i think he said he speaks english that i i don't know um yeah i don't remember that i think that might be i don't know she comes up on him and he's still alive and he's like <laughs> and the, i get that moment was her realizing that no like just nobody should have encroached on this tribe and she just she just fucked up beyond belief so yeah i get i guess it makes sense that she would do what she can to make sure nobody else goes down there and fucks with them but here's Here's where I get excited, okay? Because we have that we have the the Marvel mid credit stinger, where uh, she's walking down the hall, and Alejandro comes up behind her and he goes, "Wait, it's me, Alejandro! I made it!" And she turns around and then she turns into Melina from Mortal Kombat and eats him. <laughs> and it's a it's a great little jump scare, like you know, like a Friday the Thirteenth like dream sequence. Because then she wakes up. And her in you know she take she, she she's had a dream, and then we go back to the credits, and then during the credits, there's the the people protesting outside with t-shirts. Oh, Alejandro that's that's right, oh, that's yeah. right. He's like Che Guevara now. Yes, yeah. Alejandro, the the uh, pervert sociopath, the guy who's beating off, who got him all into this situation. Um, and by oh, we didn't even talk about like. 
the entire time that they were getting eaten alive and all that, he said, like, this is good for my organization. He was like, he was saying, he basically said, like, what we are doing here was just a basically a photo shoot. And he's like, this will allow us to do greater things with my organization. And uh, if you if you haven't seen the movie, he sounds exactly like that. It's a, yeah, an yeah, accent yeah. from from like nobody knows where that accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so then and then at the end of the movie, um, she the main character goes out of the window and opens the curtains, and there's like a protest outside. And I, he doesn't explain what they're protesting, but they're going free Samara, free Samara, which I think honestly is might be a reference to the ring because Samara was the the bitch in the ring. <laughs> So, right. yeah, so now, okay, now we're getting a crossover with uh, <laughs> Green Inferno in the ring. Alejandro the ring Alejandro has found the tape, and he's going to show it to Justine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to the natives. Yeah, but yeah, so they're, they're having a protest, and all of their shirts have Alejandro's face on it. As che, it's like a Che Guevara shirt with Ale- I mean, just another heavy-handed, you know, basically a tweet. But in a movie, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then we and uh, and then uh, I wish we could get this sequel because then during the credits we we have like a satellite image and it's a phone call. Justine gets a phone call and it's uh, this woman goes, "Hello, is this Justine?" <laughs> and she goes, "Yes." And Justine Wait, doesn't she's, have that. She's not Mexican. <laughs> it's just, it's not and Mexican. Justine goes. Oh, Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's me, Justine. <laughs> and she goes, I am Alejandro's sister. And Justine's like, I can't really talk right now. She goes, wait, wait, wait. I found a satellite photo. And as she's saying all this, there's a satellite that's like, zoo. enhance, enhance, enhance. And she's like, we need to talk. And that's and so we see a, a, a top-down shot of Alejandro, and he's now he's like the tribe leader. He's got the black and yellow, like the Wiz Khalifa paint, and yeah. and so we had, now we're setting up like a fucking apocalypse now sequel because like he's taking over the tribe, dude. Alejandro it has like Colonel Kurtz the tribe. That's what I got out of that. And the sequel is gonna be like a fucking apocalypse now movie. Ah, dude, I, I, that could have been great. I never made that connection that he took over the tribe. I thought he just was there. I thought he survived, and for some reason, his no, he's no, because you didn't see he's like crazy. his entire body was black. So he had, and that was the that was the paint that only the the tribes leaders had on. Yeah, so it's right. suggested that Alejandro has now become. He must have uh, passed the tiger trial as well. And he's he's been accepted and become a tribes leader. He must I don't know how many clits he had to cut off to do that. <laughs> but he cut off every he was the rootinest tootinest uh clit cutter in the in the jungle. <laughs> and he's the tribes leader now. And I, I feel like what what he was setting up would be like having to go back to this uh jungle and he's like a current the Colonel Kurtz of this tribe now. Oh. Sounds a lot, a lot more interesting than the first one, really. Yes, Just dude. Explore right. Explore this crazy maniac, yeah, in the jungle, surrounded by natives. And the native army. Off. Just, it's cannibal holocaust uh, completed to almost a T, except you have a survivor in this movie. So that could have been that. Mm. I know he wasn't even set to direct the sequel. I'm pretty sure that was going to be one of his guys, like one of the producers mm. or or cameramen on this film, like an AD. Uh, and then it got pulled from development. I mean, how did how did this movie perform at the box office? Obviously, critically, it probably wasn't great. Yeah, critics hated it because it was racist. Oh right, it's a uh, racist movie. Yeah. Fuck off, dude. This movie rocks. Okay. <laughs> Don't you love when whenever uh, something is uh, portrayed accurately? Because that's kind of what those tribes are like in the wild when they've never. Well, yeah. Those. By conflict. the way, by the way, there are. Because it didn't that just happen like a year or two ago? Like that missionary mm-hmm. went to the one of the um Sentinel like Sentinelese Islands right. and he that was like gonna go there or... he was gonna go there and teach the good word of Jesus Christ and peace and love and all that, and they just immediately murdered him. Yeah, they just like it was true. on site with this dude, <laughs> like <laughs> and, and it was, I mean it was yeah. yeah, it was basically like his green inferno. It was like this dude had 
he had like good intentions, but the road to hell, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and well, it made twelve mil, twelve point nine million with a five million budget, so it did made its money back, I guess. But uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I just, I guess, I have an issue with with uh, uh, white liberals getting upset when something is portrayed as savage as they are. Because like this literally happened, and well, the biggest say this. problem they had was was the that. way it's, it's the crazy. way this the way this was made. Eli Roth wants that to happen because now it's because because it is like uh, there is a lar- there is like a contingent of people who play into that, and the way this movie's made is like white liberals getting upset on behalf of somebody else, putting the putting themselves in a the situation they don't belong in. And you know, getting murdered alive for it, and so then what happens in real life is the same thing, just on Twitter, you know. And so, and that's good for Eli Roth, who's in the business of making uh, edge lord movies, <laughs> right? So we agree the that of all, his all... career was was outrage from the very beginning. I mean, even with Cabin yeah. Fever, so he, I mean, he, yeah. and he's deliberately stirring the hive by making them social justice war they do a little bit more action than the average social justice warrior but in in fact i think where where this movie didn't succeed is people weren't upset enough i think it was just like but at this moment at this point in time eli roth had shown us just pretty much he was just kind of playing the hits with each movie and this just kind of came and went i remember people were upset for like a day and it was over there was no real controversy this didn't go anywhere, uh, and it now this movie just kind of exists as like a gross out, fun little movie. Yeah, and I think I think honestly, up until I mean, really recently, uh, people haven't been watching it. You know, it's not something that I mean, maybe it's been planted on Netflix. That's where I watched it, uh, but it's not something that's talked about. It's not something that's really uh, beloved. If anything, I think uh, the Keanu Reeves Knock Knock movie that came out the same year is uh, much more interesting and has more sticking power because he winds up in kind of like a Chris D'Elia situation in that movie. You know, he's been oh, no. messing around. With yeah, I've, I've, I've heard I've heard that movie's good. I've, I've heard good things about that. It's, pre- it's pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, he uh, he sleeps with two girls and then he finds out they're both underage after the fact. And then they just like they are blackmailing him and hold him hostage while his family's away uh, at his at his home somewhere also in this same location because Eli Roth was in the business of saving money when he made his movies. So they're all vaguely Hispanic. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that they're Spanish. I think that I know there are men, I think that's one of the girls. And, and I think the other one's the, the one the star in this one. Yeah. Is this the same girl that was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Let me check. I don't think so. I think this girl plays Leo's wife and I could have it wrong. Maybe it's just another. Yep. Uh, he play, okay. She plays Fran- Francesca something. Uh, oh. Right. She plays Leo's wife at the you end know, of the movie. You know what I just remembered? Um, when Eli Roth first hit the scene and he was like the hot shit in like horror cinema. I remember. Do you guys, did you guys ever see that movie Slither? Yes. Uh, yeah. That was James Gunn, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I, and I remember at the time it was eli roth presents slither he like produced it and he like put his name on it to help promote the movie because james gunn was like an unknown at the time and it's so funny how now it's like james gunn's just like rocking it over eli roth in the industry yeah, yeah. he got quick that to movie's... do that i feel like you you have to earn some credibility first before you start presenting films because if you look at any of like quentin tarantino presents movies they're they're all piles of shit but that was like 10 15 years after he did dude the well that's the thing didn't quentin tarantino do that for eli roth yes, when they're like how eli roth got into yeah that. quentin tarantino presents hostile right that's and that's how it, that shit is so funny to me because if if you know movies, if you just like are like us, we're like we just are fans of movies. We know what that means, but that's that only people they only do that for rubes. They only do that for like right, dum dums right. who just see a name and go, "I know that guy. This must be a movie he made and is good." And it's like, no, 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 that guy had nothing to do with this. He just 
allowed them to put his name on it. Yeah. It's his friend, um, with a recognizable name. That's it. Yeah, and that and that's how we get this this world now where Eli Roth thinks he is on the same level as Quentin Tarantino. Which which is a director we were talking about recently that he should not be doing this guy presents whatever because he doesn't have enough movies. Loris, do you remember? Uh, it, I mean, it probably wasn't Eli Roth, right? It's somebody more no, recent. It wasn't. Yeah, um, it's like a horror director, but Fede it, Alvarez. I Fede think Al- was. Right, he did Evil Dead yeah. and he did Don't Breathe. And that's yeah. about it. And Fuck, dude. I tell you what, though. Solid movies. Have you seen the trailer to Don't Breathe 2? No. I fucking love this. Hey, dude, hold on. Did you see Don't Breathe? <laughs> hold on. Wait, hold on. How... How long? How much longer are we doing? I got a low battery warning. I just need to go get my charger. Uh, wait, however you're good for, really. All right, let me go get it, and then we'll, we'll rock it for like ten more minutes. All right, all right, all right. One second. Yep. Uh, Fede, uh, what is your gripe with Fede Alvarez anyway, Hans? I just don't really think he should be presenting anything because uh, I don't know. Like his movies has made money, have made money again, but uh, I guess, but uh. I guess Evil Dead, <laughs> Evil Dead is my biggest problem. That I, I just don't like that movie. I don't like what he did with it. Uh, but I, I just feel like if you if you're going to be presenting things, you, you should have more than three, four movies. You know, not just a couple of hits and, and that's it. Well, like when Guillermo like the Evil Dead movie because it was serious. Like it was a serious straight uh, uh, send up of the the films. I just don't. It didn't feel like an Evil Dead movie to me because it. Like it, it didn't have any of the elements of those evil that movie. So if he, if it was called uh, Evil Cabin, it would have it wouldn't have changed anything. Or Evil Book, you know, the connection there was very shallow. And I'm a big fan but of those movies. But they had Bruce so. Campbell at the end in front of his famous car, and he says "groovy," and it's cool. Everybody yeah. in the theater was clapping and cheering. And everybody was having a happy happy night because of that. Yeah, the universes were connected. Um, yeah. <laughs> what did you think of that series they did for Stars? Oh fuck. It was fun. It was, uh, well, I guess, what you would expect for an Evil Dead series where he's old now. I, I'm not a huge fan of what the new one sounds like, where it's just, what, Ash's daughter or something, and it's her I don't know story anything now. About this movie. It's going direct to HBO Max. I mean, they, they just uh, decided to greenlight 10 movies for next year because I guess they're going to stick with this rollout method that they've been doing. And I don't mm. mind it. But I think if they start thinking with that in mind, as opposed to just like, well, whatever theatrical movies are going to get dropped on there each month, they're going to wind up being piles of shit like Netflix has done, like Amazon Prime has done. It's it's going to yeah, go just, down a, a, a dark route. Uh, are you going to watch Suicide? Should we do a show on the Suicide Squad, speaking of James Gunn? Sure, I guess. I don't know. It's been getting a lot of really good reviews, but I don't trust early reviews ever because they're bought. They're it, people that are getting the movies early, so they're not going to criticize it as harsh as if they see it later. Right, you can't trust. So all these, movies. yeah. Uh, so the all one, type that is getting um, one of the okay. Trust okay, okay, I'm back. Uh, so uh, I, I, I had the wrong cable and I got frustrated, but I went and got the right cable. We're good. All right, what were you guys talking about? Yes, don't, uh, don't <laughs> breathe. We're just going to talk about Suicide Squad real quick, though. Um, are you into that at all? That's James Gunn. So you mean the Suicide Squad? The Suicide Squad. It looks good. I like James Gunn a lot. Um, he like, um, like movies his of his I've seen. Do what? I said you like his tweets. Oh yeah. I mean that's <laughs> dude. That is, it, his tweets are probably his best work. The same as uh, <laughs> how Michael Richards' two minutes at the Laugh Factory are better than anything Seinfeld has ever said on stage. I like that he looks like Michael McDonald though. Just white, what, what the fuck white is beard, this look? This whole white-headed look of his. This is disturbing stuff. Dog, have you seen James Gunn lately? No. It's terrifying. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, the James Gunn movies I've seen, I've really enjoyed. Super, Slither, yeah. Super, is um, yeah, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, um. I wanted to talk I about this, what this else he's Don't made. Breathe. I don't know if you saw Don't Breathe. That's a Blumhouse movie from uh, Fede Alvarez. It had, I think his name is Stephen Lang. Uh, mm-hmm. And the whole premise of this movie was he was capturing girls to keep in his basement to fill with his his freeze frozen sperm. He was going to fill them with sperm he's been saving up. 
to get one of them pregnant because his daughter died in a car wreck. Yeah. I Is mean, the, first, the first premise of the first one? I don't remember that one. being... The There's no... Of- let me say something. There's no wrong way to grieve. <laughs> <laughs> I've dealt with it myself. Did you freeze your come? I've been, I have been hoarding cum. <laughs> and my roommates have asked me, what is this? Is, the, uh, is this white people shit? And I go, no, it's not white people shit. It's white people cum. <laughs> and, and I tell them, I've lost someone I really love. <laughs> so they understand. Yes. Oh, we, we understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm trying to bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> but you see Dalton with a, 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 a fiery pentagram on the ground covered in his own cum. Yeah, yeah, trying yeah. Trying to bring him back. <laughs> yes. Ave Satanas. <laughs> <laughs> What's wild about this movie is he, obviously he's the antagonist of that film. He's the scary guy in the basement. In this sequel, he's all of a sudden... The good guy. They're doing a Terminator 2 situation where he's spending off the house to protect his new daughter that he, you know, based it into. His rape baby? (laughs) Yes. So it's like that movie Room? It's, I guess so. One of the guys is like, I'm going to tell her, you know, how how she was conceived or something like that. And then he freaks out. Imagine, imagine having to, yeah, imagine having to explain that to your daughter. Yeah. You know, you raise her as a single father, and then you're wondering, oh, my God, she's going to have questions one day. She's going to grow up, and it's before I know it, she's going to be asking me those questions I wasn't ready to answer. And how am I going to tell her that I... How am I going to tell her... How am I going to tell her that I kept her mother and 12 other women in my basement and force-fed my cum into their pussies? <laughs> You know, when a man loves his <laughs> daughter, you know, you kidnap 12 women, freeze your cum, and just yeah. ice pop it into their pussy until one sticks. <laughs> yeah, being a parent is tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dog, what, 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 are, what are your thoughts on this pig movie? I just oh, saw I love- Pig. I, I saw a Pig recently. I posted a nice shot of the inside of the theater. Been a while since I've been in the theater. Dude replies to my tweet with the, the address of the theater. He said, that looks exactly like... And then the theater name and place. I was very scared. Uh, but this pig movie was pretty good, huh? I loved it, man. Yeah, it was. Um, took me by surprise because it, uh, it. I hadn't seen many ads for it, but it looked like it was going to be like uh, Nicolas Cage's John Wick. Like it has a similar plot where it's like he has a pig and then. Uh, something a foul runs upon the pig and he's set out to uh re- you know it's reve- avenge his pig in a way or re- it you know what i mean it's like similar to how at jo- in john wick they kill the dog and he goes on a killing spree because and i thought this was going to be nicholas cage going on a killing spree and uh it was it man i don't want to spoil it i will say I got, you got to go in as cold as possible, and it's a wonderful, quiet, beautiful movie. <laughs> it's it's a lot sadder than I was expecting. I it's also thought- very, very, very sad. It, John Wick gets you pumped. I, <laughs> yeah, dude. John, dude, John Wick is the green inferno to this to this movie, <laughs> dude. It, yeah. At, at all times, I was expecting him to do exactly that. Just go crazy because everyone's just fucking around with him. About He's so thing, but... restrained, man. I, I don't want to... I Because this is a movie that... Very rarely... And this is part of the movie. Very rarely do I care about a movie so much that I, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. <laughs> How about this? How about and there's this? very few things we get to care about in this life. If anybody who hasn't seen Pig uh, does not want to be spoiled, just jump out right at this very second. G- say goodbye to Dalton. That's the end of the show. All right, let's talk about Pig. This pig fucking dies. Alan Arkin kills yeah. the pig. It's sad. It's very sad. Alan oh, Arkin shit. Shows. That was Alan Arkin? Yes. <laughs> Damn, dude. They made him look so Middle Eastern. 
I thought that was just like some Arab guy. Because <laughs> Alex Wolf looks Arab, and I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is, they got like some Muslim. Dude, I did yeah. not even realize that was how an argument. You know what I really don't like about this Alex Wolf is all those distracting moles on his face. That was so. Oh, he has movie. such a weird look, man. He's like Shelly Duvall. He's like <laughs> ugly, but kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's an app comparison. Yeah, and he's uh, I like how he goes on uh, kind of a he doesn't he doesn't go on really a journey, but he goes through like a character evolution where he's a tryhard, and he's at least less of a tryhard by the end of the movie. He feels a little more secure in himself, maybe. Well, it, it's it's um, two different people from two different generations, different backgrounds, each dealing with their own grief, and. Uh, you know they but they're each putting up like walls they're like guarding themselves because because grief is consuming them and then circumstances m make it so that they each have to start tearing down those walls and really find a way to move forward and find some kind of purpose in life something to care about um, man, I'm gonna get sad, guys. Did you cry? Did we Did know? You cry when the pig was revealed dead, dog. Of course, dude. When Nicholas, <laughs> dude, when Nicholas Cage just like falls to the ground immediately, and then it's it's like a fucking grenade in Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> like all the sound goes out. Oh my god, I was, dude, I was bawling. <laughs> Hans, were you touched by the? I know you watched Pig right before this show. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, 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 no I love I love no. that the I love that the only moment in the movie where Nicolas Cage goes full Nicolas Cage is at that kid when he's taking the bicycle and the kid comes up to him and he goes ah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the yeah, only yeah. time we see him like really let loose in the rest of the movie he's just so restrained just like it's so tense because you feel like at any moment this dude's mm. gonna snap and he never does. He keeps his cool the entire movie, except for when he uh, yells at the kid and when the pig dies. Uh, and then, like, like the phoenix, they, him and Alex Wolf both just have to keep living. It. Ah, dude, I'm doing do this stuff. <laughs> do, we, do we know what happens to the mom? To the mom, because I think the only thing we hear about her is when the nurse is like, "Oh, I'm gonna drain her trachea or some." Gross. Well, yeah, yeah so you want to say hi while I dump the juices from her body out into this tube. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so that's mom. that's also Nicolas Cage is capable of finding closure because his wife is for sure dead. Mm -hmm. But for for Alex Wolf, it's just being dragged on and on and on because they're keeping her alive, even though. She's pretty. It's what they Im infer or imply, I don't know what the right word is, is that she's brain. She's like Terry Shivo, and um, you know. Are we sure she wasn't he, just like a retarded person in a retarded person home? We never see behind the. Door. So Alan Arkin raped a retard. <laughs> I look, she was like twenty five or something, probably. You know, what's the Jake Flores? <laughs> Jake Flores. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So for for Alex Wolf. He has to figure out a way to live with this, like, open wound. This, like, uh, not being able to have any closure because his mom is all shy -voed. And Nicolas Cage has now lost everything. But... It's the pig. But, yeah, but... but even, even, even I don't, Alan Arkin, too. Like he, on his journey... He's, He's holding on to something that he didn't even know he was holding on to until he tastes that food and remembers. That was whatever. beautiful, man. That's the thing. On Nicolas Cage's journey, he never... It's. I mean, dude, this is, this is just... This is living a Christian life. This, this is Christ-like. <laughs> Nicolas Cage never raises a finger to anybody. All he wants is his pig back. And all he shows to anyone in his path is compassion and kindness. Even that chef, like he, that scene with that chef, Nicholas Cage, yeah. Nicholas Cage destroys him, but he's it's like the nicest, most kind thing he could have done for that guy. Because he reminded the guy of his like humanity. He reminded the guy like you're not 
you're living a, a a fake life. You're not doing what you want. Like this is all fake. You just got comfortable in it. Oh my god, guys, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? Pick tonight. We should have, man. I, I mean, it's 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 funnier to talk about like a mo- a kind of a bad movie and then fall in love with it. I just love Pig really spoke to me because I'm like, I've, you know, I I'm dealing with this stuff right now, and it's like it was just such a great cathartic movie for me. Oh I, was, my God. Uh, I was watching it with my mom and at the end she was like wait they're not even gonna give him like a little pig to train like she was expecting that at least <laughs> well, no because the he, ending at the end and, well because no, he, he says found- he says i don't need this pig to hunt truffles he's like the trees yeah. tell me where they are and uh man i got it. this is gonna <laughs> you know what the ending of this of pig reminded me of we'll get out on this did you did you guys ever watch did you guys ever finish samurai jack no 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 so oh so season five of samurai jack is very similar to pig it uh could you expound (laughs) upon that yeah (laughs) because samurai jack is this very tragic character who continually has everything taken taken from him like job in the bible and season five of samurai jack um he you think he's gonna get a happy ending and he doesn't uh because uh the police raided the massage parlor <laughs> hey, <folks. laughs> no he it's just he he it, the way it ends is he loses everything like he's completely alone and he's like save the day he he has all he's been through all this journey but he's like completely alone and it just ends with him. It ends very similar to pig where he goes and sits down and just looks up at the sun. And it's just like, tomorrow's another day, you know? Yeah. So, uh, p- uh, check out pig and check out a uh, samurai Jack. It's a good, <laughs> excellent. All right. Well, I think we'll, I think we'll close out on that note. Uh, so Green Inferno, are you officially turned around on this? Would you recommend Green Inferno? Absolutely, dude. I fucking love Green Inferno, <laughs> man. I, I Man, thinking back on it, it's it's such a f- just a fun getting high movie, man. I, I've honestly really turned around on Nicolas Cage lately. I watched uh, Face Off the other day and I had not seen that in like 10, 15 damn, years. I mean, stupid movie. That Face Off's off. one of the oh. best action movies of all time it's john woo just like i mean yeah john woo just, just having a good time man oh we got i gotta get ready for a show yes <laughs> <laughs> oh you guys are, you guys are gripping me uh this was this was fun how do you guys want to do this do you guys want me to throw this up on our patreon hell yeah dude, cross promote yeah 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 do that do that yeah, yeah once you have it uh email it to whoever's Wait, email no, you got no. Oh, okay. Don't don't say we're still. Yeah, not what? yet. What are you talking about? What are you getting all? Or are you are you gonna cut? For? All right, yeah, that's. I'm not gonna video. say. I'm not gonna say someone's actual email. Okay. I'm oh, saying right, if yeah, you yeah. have if you chat. have an email address already, or yeah. I could DM you which email address I would like it to be sent to. Sure. Oh sure, uh, sure. yeah, just send it, and uh, we'll we'll have our producer throw it up on our Patreon. Awesome. Louis J. Gomez, the producer. Louis okay. J. Go. We're gonna we're gonna go in there and we're gonna say, "Hey, Louis, why don't you get off your fat ass and upload the goddamn podcast?" <laughs> hey, Louis Gomez. Yeah, I forgot the J, bitch. <laughs> By the way, hold, hold on. I gotta say that was a joke Joe made uh, last night, and it really it really made me laugh. So shout out to Joe for saying, yeah, I forgot the J bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That has been movies. Uh, Dalton link me to your Twitter or something. And we'll put that in the description here. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for coming on Dalton. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome.